Well, hello there, friends. So, working outside again today. What we got is we got this Mustang top going on. So, you know what? Sometimes this is really common where the top, the vinyl top, this is called self cloth vinyl right here. But uh, what happens is it shrinks over time, and it's really common that the back windows and everything start to separate. So, the water gets inside, and then the owner of the car gets concerned. So anyway, uh, this customer, I'll show you what he bought and what he's going to replace his top with. So look what we got here. Famous name brand. Okay, so this is not sponsored. But you know what? I've been using this company here for about 45 years and I've never ever had a problem with the way the top fits. So let's take a look and see what was in the box. Look at that. It's pretty special. This is a black stay fast cloth top. So for those of you that don't know, the stay fast cloth, you take a look at it right there. It's a like a black canvas looking stuff. And the advantages of this here is the color doesn't fade and it doesn't shrink like vinyl does. So if you can keep your car in a garage or somewhere out of the sun, this top here will last decades so here we go and inside here is going to be the hard glass window let me know in the comments if you're just like Jones and you want to pop, pop these bubbles I just got a few for you. Oh, I can't help myself. Oh. So the first thing I do is technique number 772. What that is, is vandalism. Oops, what did I just do there? Oh, what I just did there is I just gave myself instant access to the bolts instead of climbing in the back seat. You can do it right here. Now that I have this access, I, used to, I don't have to deal with my claustrophobic now. I used to have to climb into the back seats and have a hard glass window in my face but now look at that there they are those are the nuts what do you think about that one So here's for technique number 88. So the most important thing about this whole top install is this rear bow height. This is the rear bow right here that's right above the, the edge of the window. This is the rear bow. So the rear bow height measurement. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to measure. What I'm doing is I'm putting it right here at the bottom of the trim. And... What I see there is about 24 and a half inches. 24 and a half inches right there to the center of that bow. So what I'm gonna do is you can either mark it, so that way you have it. These are my trusty China marker. 24 and a half. Okay, and then the other thing that I do is I also do the same right here. So where the, the, the two trim pieces meet right here, I'll put my yardstick right there. Then we'll measure that one. What I'm seeing there is about 21 and a half. Oh, I take that back. Yeah, that's 21. Oh, 21 and three quarter. Let's be more precise. 21 and three quarter. Got a double three there triple three anyway we'll go do the same on the other side the reason i'm stressing the importance of the rear bow height is i've seen guys they don't measure 
so either it's going to be moved this way or this way or it's going to be too far forward or too far backwards and then when you lay the top over the top this will they, they put the top where they think it should be on the bow but then over here in the window area it it won't fit or over here it won't fit or else it'll end up with some big old wrinkles someplace here on the side so that's why that rear bow height is so important so don't skip it so this customer also picked up the the pad kit and the cables so one thing i also do if i'm going to be taking pads apart is i will also mark where the end of the pad is right there that way i have something to refer back to later when i go to put it back together again so i'll also mark on the pad right here well i guess you can see it there with the staples right there that way the new pad will go in the same place let's also mark where the edge of this window stops right here right there oh great he left me something to drink yum so anyway that's what a, the back behind the seat looks like right here so we have the well so this well just really just pops off. You see that? How the how the nut right there holds on. So I pull on it. Like that. And that reveals the nut. So I'm gonna take all those off and we'll get the back window out. So the other thing is to pull these off. So check this out. These are plastic nuts. Okay, so because they're plastic, you don't really want to use an impact or even a, an air um, ratchet um, because you can strip the plastic right there I guess since I'm already in the back seat I'm gonna go ahead and just zip the rest of these out here and get the whole back window loose so be very careful when you take these off not to drop them down into the abyss if they fall down into the fender or you're down there in the dark you're never gonna get it because it's plastic you can't pick it out with a magnet so we're gonna go ahead and take these phillips screws off from the back trim here little Phillips screw that is right there see it right there so the next thing to finagle out of there is right down here there's a spring-loaded clip you can kind of see it right there see that it's it's a rusty thing so anyway you gotta get really creative on how you're gonna unhook that and how you hook it back up again so anyway it's not something I'm gonna be able to show you because that's a technique and that's something that you got to figure out because I can't explain it and that's the reason why what I did is I took my hook tool or people they call it other things that's just why I call it a hook tool so the silver thing is my tool 
the rusty thing is the cable. You see how it has that little hook on the end right there? That's the trick. Now I gotta get it out. Out of that material there. You can see the, the grommet. Okay, now let's undo that. Okay, that's what the two pieces look like separated. Now I'll take a small, smaller hook tool, or some people call it a cotter pin tool, or there's like other names for this. We've gone through that before on the channel. But anyway, that makes these clips here a lot easier to remove. So I just kind of pull it up like that. So I'm going to move on to the front header now. So I have a problem. These screws, these T10 screws, which are very tiny and strip out easily, these are frozen solid. They're rusted. So I'm going to go ahead and soak them with good old WD-40. Try to loosen up that rust. Looks like a T15 right there. So, so this might be a good time to mention this. Technique number 835,025 is to take your parts, your screws and your nuts and your clips, everything, put them all in the, in the back seat floor area right here. And then when you're doing the front, you put all your pieces in the front seat area. And what happens when you put them down there, they never get lost. Now for technique number 68. Okay, what that is, is take your Sharpie, China marker, and what you do is you mark your holes here. And the reason you do that is when you put the, when you put the material over the holes, you don't know where your holes are anymore. But if you mark it and you cover it like that, you still see your mark and you know exactly where your hole is no guessing the next thing is to remove all the staples so I'm gonna start doing that now we got to remove the staples here for the front of the headliner And now let's loosen up that cable.
So now for technique number 241, what we have are the rear window pads. So we're going to mark that. But you see this edge right here? The edge of that bow. I'm also going to mark it. So that's going to come handy later on. Because I'm going to put the same mark on the new window. So we're going to do that there. We're also going to do it on the edge right here. Mark that. And then we're also going to mark where the top ended right there. Okay. So what I did is I marked the edge of where the top meets the window right there. And I marked it on the rear bow. The rear hold down bow. So I marked the center right here also. Mark the back window and I mark the bow. Okay, now we're going to take the staples out from the rear bow right here. The last thing that's holding this window assembly is the back of the headliner right here. Right there, there's a 220. So let's zap that one out. So here's a bonus for any of you that need a new tack strip up front because it it's really gets brittle and it breaks away like that. So you can see how it just kind of fell apart. Anyway, what I do is I take an eighth inch drill bit, drill the old rivets out. And here's a bonus for those of you that need to change out your pads. What's very important here is that we're only changing out one at a time. So we can take this one off, but you have to leave the other side on until we're finished with this side. And then we'll do the other side. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our new pad material. It's an option when you order the top. So we take this one here. There's going to be two. So what we're going to do is we are going to make our pattern from this one. Remember all the marks that we put on it? 
That's why we're going to transfer everything to the new one. You can see here what I did is I went a, about an inch longer than the than the pad here because it's I always leave a little bit extra long just in case because you can always cut off more but you can't add more. The two middle bows will switch over to the 3 8 So now for technique number 6498. What I think is a good idea is these ends right here. See, remember I left it a little bit long? So that way we can cut it. And then after that, so that way the edges don't fray, we're going to mount the edges there. That's not going to come apart. So today you get a third bonus video. So we're talking about the side cables. Right here. I'm gonna change these out, I'm gonna drill out this pop rivet. So here we have the new cable. Okay, let's cover up some staples. Now I gotta start taking all these staples off. Just when you thought we were done with the staples. Okay, let's go ahead and mark this up also. We got this plastic piece here that has to go back on. I am a tripod. 
right now, believe it or not. That's what I wanted to see right there. Mark this one too. Okay, so now it's time to transfer our markings over to our new window. So basically what I do is I take the old window and I lay it right over the top. So really what I do is I try to match up the four corners of the window. So I put the top, the old window over the top and I match the corner and I'll do that to all four corners. So now what I'll do is I'll take my piece of chalk because it cleans off a lot nicer off of the stay fast. So laying everything right over the top, I can see a little bit of a difference here. So I'm going to go for it. This is where the artist in you comes in. You can see all these marks right here. I'll just go all the way around. So using the 516 stainless steel staples, we're going to be putting this back window together with that rear hold down. So we're always going to start in the center. So this was the center right here. I'll take the center of the top. That's where we're going to start, right there. Okay, that's our center. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work our way out. We're going to start in the center, and we're going to work our way out here, and then we'll do the same on the other side. Now I'm just marking where the location of the hole is. I'm just filling the back side with my finger there. I can know that there's a hole there. Okay, you remember the space between side in the rear there's a space there it's about an inch or so so we marked it on the old top before so we're going to put that right there on that edge right where it belongs Now let's attach the side here. So we also have our chalk mark from the last time right there. So 
So this is the important line. Okay. Okay, let's do the same to the other side. Now I guess we're ready to install this back on the car again. So I'll meet you outside. So now for technique number 5428. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take our, remember our plastic nuts here? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm going to put one on each end and one in the middle. The reason that we're doing that is because it'll hold the back of, of, of that um, curtain there. It'll hold it in place, but I'm only putting in three because it, what if we have to make some kind of adjustment? Um, if I were to put all ten of them in there, then that's a lot more work to take everything apart again. So we're just going to go ahead and put in three. So let's take some of the tension off of that top by putting the roof back. Okay, okay so we're going to start our, our attachment by matching up our center marks. See, this is what I'm talking about, is we might have the best intentions, but sometimes we have to make adjustments. So this area right here looks pretty good, but then I can see that right here, left of the center right here, it dips down a little bit, which means that it, I need to tighten up this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a little chalk reference mark here and here. So between here and here, when I take it, the three bolts off again, I'm going to go ahead and pull those staples off and pull it tighter, put the new staples in, and that would have been our new adjustment. So, so far it's all looking pretty good. So there is this little instruction sheet that was included with the top. And that is like a million dollars worth of advice right there. Now for technique number 7,824. 
You remember our little trouble child down here? This spring loaded clip thing right here? Okay, there we go. That thing. Okay, now what I do is I'll go ahead and put that back into this hole again without there being any tension on the top. Right now you can see that the top, there's no tension there. It's not attached to anything. That's going to help us out. So we're not going to be fighting anything. success okay so now it's time to take out those three temporary bolts that we put in the back window and we're going to go ahead and attach the top here to that rear hold down so these are the marks that i made before one was here the other one is here so between here and here I'm going to tighten that up a little bit. Okay, it doesn't have to move that much because it really wasn't that bad. Maybe a quarter inch, right there. Okay, now we're installing the top onto the rear hole down here. So we have our mark here. That's where the end of the top goes right there so let's go ahead and put a couple staples in that one okay let's make some access holes for the bolt uh, for the bolts to go through So this is Jonesy. Jonesy is almost like a coat wire hanger right here. And I've been using this one here, Jonesy, for about 30, 35 years. I always keep him in the same place. So I always know where he's going to be. So what I do is I hook the cable on the end here. We're going to feed it through the top. Good old Jonesy. So if you still have the spring cover here from the old spring, you can also reuse that. Just pull that off, put it on the new one. And there's Miss Nibbles. Miss Nibbles is going to give me a hand with the rest of it, right Miss Nibbles? So now for technique number 3,584. Okay, so what that one is, is I want to get the top centered here so that way we can connect it to this bow right here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to temporarily, we found our center here, you see the marks, but I'm going to go ahead and temporarily glue this to the edge here. And that way I know we have our center. 
The next thing I'm going to do now is right here where the bow, here behind the header bow, I'm going to put some glue on there just to kind of hold it in place while I screw the headliner back on. That's going to be my third hand for me. That'll make things go a lot faster. Okay, so this is where you're gonna really wanna be careful. Cause I've seen guys slip and put holes right through the convertible top. So don't do that. No, I'll put in the rest. Okay, let's go ahead and zap in the back window. So it's always best to take these plastic nuts and just put them on finger tight. Don't tighten them all up yet. That's what we're gonna do last. So let's just get all these on. And then once everything is fitting well, that's when we torque it all down. Well, not torque literally, but we'll just tighten it all down. Next, we have our wire right here for our heated glass window. And there's a pocket that's right here that you feed the wire through. Hook that one up. Now we'll put this corner of the headliner back so one of the very common mess ups that I see a lot is when people they put the, the top on too tight and they can't close the roof and latch it down because the roof is in the, the, the vinyl and the, the roof portable top has been installed too tight so this is technique number 65,222. Okay, so you see the edge right here. This is your top frame. So what I do is I pull it forward and I see where the edge of the top frame is. Right here, actually that one, and the, the, the roof here of the car. So what I'll do is I'll just put a little mark right there. I know that's where it is. like that no guessing okay so let's put the front of the headliner back together Now we'll glue the front of the top on. While we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna go ahead and put the glue on these quarter panel areas here. Remember our chalk marks? Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna match our chalk marks to the front edge, the leading edge of that front bow.
Okay, so now let's check out the fit and see how we did. I forgot to put this back first before I put the and finish the front of the top, but I can still access it from the back side there. Then I just got to put this screw right there and finish up the headliner. Now take something like this scratch all here to find your holes. And now we just friction press this uh, rubber gasket in. So now's a good time to put the staples in the front header bolt. Now for the rain gutter clips. Okay, so remember we have a hole here for a screw. Earlier I marked here where it begins and ends. So that's where it's gonna go back. So we know that we have to put a hole on the other side right there. So I'm just gonna mark the area. That way I can find it better. Now we'll put our clips back. Now we have the side trim to put back on. Okay, now let's just snap the weld back in. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. So anyway, like I was saying, 